Hello, today I'm going to check out the Wismax ML420 BTF. And if you haven't heard of Wismax, neither did I until they reached out. They're a South Korean company that is currently selling their cases locally, planning to branch out globally. And that's the reason they're sending the cases out for review. Now, this case actually looks pretty good quality. It has an MSRP of $110 for the black version, an extra $7 for the white version. The case actually supports motherboards with back connectors. And like I say, the quality looking in from the outside is actually pretty good. So what I'm going to be doing is checking out the case, showing all those features. We'll do a quick build on the case. And then at the end of the video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on the case. And is this something actually you should be keeping an eye out for when it goes on sale? So let's dive in and take a closer look. To remove our tempered glass side panel, we've got a captive thumb screw on the back. We're going to need to loosen. Then we're going to be able to pull the panel out and lift it up and away. And our other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. Taking out the panel we've just removed, you'll notice we've got this large perforated area in it, indicating that we're going to be able to side mount fans and radiators in the case. There's no additional dust filters over this, and Wismax are going with just mesh on the side. Taking a look at our case's front I.O., we've got a power and reset button. We've got two USB Type A ports, a single Type C port, separate headphone and microphone jacks, and an LED button to cycle through the RGB effects on the case's built-in controller. Our case's top panel can simply be popped off from the top. Again, we don't have any additional dust filters at the top, but as the mesh is quite fine, this shouldn't be a problem. On the top of the case, you can be able to mount up to three 120mm or 340mm fans, or up to a 420mm radiator. We've got a removable fan stroke radiator bracket at the top, which is held on with four screws. And once the screws have been removed, we can simply lift the bracket off. We have an interesting design of our case's front mesh panel, and the panel is removed by simply pulling it forward. Again, if we take a look at the back of this panel, there's no additional dust filters. You can see at the front of the case, Wismac have installed three 140mm PWM ARGB fans. They are on a removal bracket. There's four thumb screws we're going to have to remove, and then we can remove the front fan bracket. If you prefer, at the front of the case, it is possible to mount up to a 420mm radiator. You can see at the rear of the case, Wismax have pre-installed another 140mm PWM ARGB fan. If you prefer, it is possible to mount either a 120mm fan or 120 or 140mm radiator. On the side of the case, you can fit three 120 or three 140mm fans or again up to a 420mm radiator. It's also possible to mount two 120mm fans on our power supply surround, as well as either a 120 or 140mm fan at the bottom of the case. On the bottom of the case, we've got a full-length dust filter, which can be pulled out from the back for cleaning. We've got our case accessory box here. I'll show you what it contains. In it, we've got labels for what is in each of the compartments. And this is going to be really handy for keeping everything together after the build. In terms of motherboard support, the case is compatible with motherboards up to AATX in size. And you want to go with a CPU cutter. The maximum height supported is 180 millimeters. And as I mentioned at the start, you are going to be able to use this case with motherboards with back connectors. To do this, you're going to have to remove one of these two panels, depending on whether you've got a micro ATX or an ATX motherboard with back connectors. So if you're going up with an ATX motherboard with back connectors, you're going to remove this bottom panel. It's held on with four screws. And that's then going to open up the space where the connectors in your motherboard are going to be able to pass through to the back. In terms of at the side and at the top, they're actually going to pass through the rubber grommets. If you've got a micro ATX motherboard, you're going to need to remove this slot here. It's behind this SSD mount. And on it, you've got six screws holding it in place. And then the connectors at the bottom of a micro ATX motherboard are going to pass through. Obviously, if you're going with a micro ATX motherboard, you leave the bottom panel in place. So it's good to see we've got plenty of rubber grommets all the way around the motherboard. And we've also got a nice rubber grommet in the power supply stride where you're going to bring your GPU cables through. At the rear of the case, we've got eight horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets. And in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 460 millimeters. And your graphics card is going to be really well supported in this case. We've got this GPU support bracket here. There's two little captive thumb screws you need to loosen, and that's going to allow you to slide each of these brackets up and down to get them into good position to support your GPU. If you want to remove the bracket, there's a screw at the top and a screw at the bottom to remove. If you want to mount your graphics card vertically, it is possible to rotate this bracket around 90 degrees. There's four screws holding it on. Then we're going to be able to bring the bracket into the main body of the case, turn it round, and we can secure it into place with the same four screws. So that's what the bracket looks like in the vertical position. In terms of installing your riser cable, you can either install it closer to the motherboard or further towards the case's tempered glass side panel. There are two little thumb screws that come in the case accessory box. You're going to simply screw into place. They go in nice and easily by hand, but the standoff insertion and removal tool is included in the case accessory box if you need to use it. 
You can then set your riser cable up onto the bracket and secure it into place with two screws from the case accessory box. Important to say that you do have to pick up a riser cable as an optional extra, but it's great that you don't need an extra bracket. If you don't go with a vertical GPU, it is possible to mount two 2.5 inch drives on the power supply shroud. You've got these little rubber pads that are going to push into here. And then you're going to take these little standoffs and screw them into the back of your SSD. And you just need to line this up with the rubber pads on the bottom and push the drive down into place. So you're going to be able to put one of these here, one of them here, and you'll see on the end of the power supply shroud, it is also possible to mount another drive here. Again, if you're not going for a fan down at the bottom of the case, it is possible to mount a three and a half inch drive in place. You can see we've got mounting holes down at the bottom. You're simply going to line the holes in your drive up with these and screw it in from underneath. We've got two more drive mounting brackets at the rear of the case. And on each of these brackets, you're going to be able to mount two two and a half inch drives or a single three and a half inch drive. So it is easy to remove these brackets. There's a thumb you're going to loosen and then you're going to lift the brackets up and away. In terms of cable routing space at the back, this looks to be good, particularly as we're going to be plugging our connectors into the back of the motherboard. And we've got these nice little clips here for managing your cables. And we've got more clips over towards the middle of the case as well as these Velcro cable straps. A really nice touch is we've got these little tracks here for routing our cables over the back of our side brackets. You're not going to be able to see them when you look in from the front. Now at the top of the case, we've got a PWM and ARGB hub. You can see that it has five ports, so our four case fans are pre-installed, and we've got one spare PWM and one spare ARGB port. We've got the LED button plugged in, so we're going to be able to press the LED button on the front of the case to cycle through the hub's built-in ARGB effects. And good to see the hub comes with PWM and ARGB control. We're just going to need to plug these cables into our motherboard, and we need to remember not to forget to plug the SATA cable into our power supply to power the hub. In terms of our case cables, we've got a HD audio cable, front panel type C, USB 3.0 cable, and nice to see our front panel cables are all organized into the single cable. Our power supply is going to go down at the bottom, and the case is compatible with full-size HTX power supplies up to a maximum length of 285 millimeters. And installing your power supply should be pretty straightforward because we've got this removal bracket at the back. We're going to be able to fix directly to our power supply and then stop the whole thing in from the back.
take a look at our temperatures, our i9-14900K idled at 36 degrees and reached a maximum of 102 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test. During that test, there was up to 10% thermal throttling, although that result is much better than I've got with the same CPU in a lot of other builds recently. Our RTX 4070 Super idled at 27 degrees and reached a maximum of 67 degrees under load. In terms of noise, we had average noise levels of 34 decibels at idle and 50 decibels under load. So hopefully now you can see the reason I decided to cover this case on the channel even though you can't buy it. I see an awful lot of potential in what Wizmax were doing for their cases and actually I think if they do bring this case to the mainstream it is going to be really really popular. For $110 this case offers incredible value for money. Um, in terms of the looks it's good, in terms of the build quality it's exceptional throughout. You've got really solid tempered glass and steel side panels, good mechanisms for securing them, nice and modern. In terms of what the case offers, you've got absolutely loads in terms of cooling support, up to three 420 millimeter radiators, loads of drive support in the main body and at the back of the case. We've got support for the latest standard with back connector motherboards, a separate power supply mounting bracket, and um, we've got nice cable clips at the back of the case and plenty of Velcro cable straps. We've got loads and loads of rubber grommets. There's removable fan and radiator mounting brackets. All our front panel connectors are organized into a single cable. There's a really nice case accessory box and the case comes with four good 140 millimeter PWM ARGB fans included and a really nice fan and ARGB hub with motherboard control. In terms of what I don't like about the case, there is really only one thing and that is the implementation of the back connector motherboard support. There's a few things I just don't understand. I don't understand why the connectors are coming through the rubber grommets. So you have to go hooking in the back of the rubber grommets, pulling them out of the way to find your connectors. And the rubber grommets do get in the way of putting lugging your cables in. The difficulty is if you remove the rubber grommets then you're going to have a large cutout on display, particularly towards the right hand side of the motherboard. The other bit I find a little bit confusing is the removal cutouts at the bottom of the case that you can take out if you're going to use a back connector motherboard. And what I really think would be much more useful is having proper cutouts over towards the right and at the top of the motherboard, moving the rubber grommets further out and further up. And um, so if you are going with a standard motherboard, it's not a problem. They're going to cover those cutouts and then you're going to be able to use the rubber grommets. Whereas if you're going with a back connector motherboard, the connectors are actually going to come through to the back of the case where you can plug all the cables in. So in terms of feedback for Wizmax, I think really the only thing they need to improve in this case is how they're going to support the back connector motherboards. Other than that, this case is absolutely brilliant. I would encourage them to bring it outside their local market because I think it is going to be very popular. And I would be most delighted to check out further cases from them going forward. If you want to see any of the parts I've used in this build, you'll find a full link to everything in the description. And if you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.